Of all the gods of ancient Greece, there were few feared more than Hades. The brother of Zeus and Poseidon, Hades was lord of the underworld, an isolated place where the souls of the dead would reside. From the greatest of heroes to the most tyrannical kings, no one would be able to escape Hades' judgement, with those who had upset him or the gods of Olympus undergoing some of the most infamous punishments known to man. But while Hades commanded great respect, his journey to becoming ruler of the underworld would not be easy, as the earth had not always been controlled by the gods. His rise to power and the great war that followed would be so destructive that it threatens to tear the world itself apart. From a neglected child to lord of the dead, this is the story of Hades. Long ago ruled the Titans, children of the earth and sky. But their reign was not to last, as Cronus, the youngest and strongest Titan, would have three sons and three daughters with his sister Rhea, with these children becoming known as the gods. Cronus, however, was a cruel father, and having just been informed that one of his children was prophesied to overthrow him, would swallow each of them whole as they were born. Only one would escape this horrible fate, with Zeus, the youngest of his children, being hidden away until he reached manhood, and was strong enough to challenge his father. When the time came Zeus would return, striking down Cronus and releasing his siblings from his father's stomach. With them now at his side, Zeus would wage a war for ten long years against the Titans, enlisting the help of the Cyclopses, legendary craftsmen who would forge Zeus a mighty thunderbolt, Poseidon a trident, and Hades a hat of invisibility, turning the tide of the war. With the Titans defeated, Zeus would imprison them in Tartarus, deep within the earth, where they would remain in torment for eternity. With the world now free of the Titans rule, the three brothers Zeus, Poseidon and Hades would decide what realm each would claim, with Zeus receiving the sky, Poseidon the sea, and Hades the underworld, where the spirits of the dead would reside. Hades, the oldest of his brothers, ruled the kingdom of the dead. However, Hades would not command death itself. Instead, that power lay with Thanatos, who would claim the souls of mortals when they died. As he dwelt so far from the other gods, Hades would not be considered an Olympian, instead only caring for his domain. Rarely leaving his palace, Tales of Hades' wrath were known throughout the ancient world, with few humans daring to speak his name for the fear of drawing his attention. Instead, Hades would simply be referred to as the Infernal Zeus, or Zeus of the Underworld. As a god of the Underworld, Hades would own all the precious metals and gemstones found beneath the earth, with the Romans calling him Pluto, meaning the Rich One. Upon a mortal's death, Thanatos would separate the soul from the body, with Hermes the messenger god then guiding the soul to the shores of the underworld. Waiting at the shore would be the eternal ferryman Charon, who was the only one able to guide the deceased across the deadly river Styx, a giant waterway that separated the earth from the underworld. Only those who had coins placed under their tongue when buried were able to pay Charon's fee, with those who could not afford the journey, destined to wander the shores of the river Styx for a hundred years before they were allowed to cross. Having travelled along the river Styx, the souls would pass the White Rock before arriving at the giant adamantine gates of the underworld, where Cerberus, the three-headed dog, stood guard, ready to devour intruders or those trying to escape. Resuming their journey and coming ashore, the souls would be directed towards the court of the underworld, where three judges would decide their fate. The judges would examine each soul, looking through every action they had made while alive. For those who had not angered the gods, a tranquil place lay before them, but for those who had, an eternity of misery and suffering awaited. After a judgement was reached, the souls would be directed along one of three paths, either to the fields of Asphodel, the eternal paradise of Elysium, 
or to the deepest depths of Hades' realm, Tartarus, a place of scalding fire. The fields of Asphodel were a peaceful place for those who did not achieve anything notable in life, good or evil. It would be here that most souls were sent, and after a thousand years had passed, and their time had finally come to an end, each person would drink from the river Lethe, whose waters would wipe away their memory. Born anew, each soul having forgotten their previous life, would be reincarnated and returned to the earth, starting the eternal cycle once more. The second path, however, would lead to Elysium, a paradise of eternal bliss, where the souls of heroes, demigods, and especially good mortals would reside. Those sent here were loved by the gods and could experience all of life's pleasures, with parties, feasts, and hunting consuming much of their time. Each soul was given the option to return to Earth, but most would choose to stay and not have to endure once again the hardships of life. Within Elysium but across the shore lay the Isle of the Blessed, reserved only for the greatest of heroes, with Helen of Troy, Achilles and Odysseus all residing there for eternity. The third and last path would lead to Tartarus, the deepest depths of the underworld, reserved only for the worst of criminals and those who had offended the gods. It would be here that Cronus and the other titans would reside, looking on for eternity as new souls entered the realm of the damned. This would be the only place Hades became involved, with the god himself designing and overseeing each soul's punishment based on their previous crimes. For the mortal prince Ochnus, Hades would devise a punishment of eternal repetition, forcing him to weave a rope of straw whilst a donkey would eat it as fast as it was made, ensuring the task was never completed. Whereas for the Danaides, 49 sisters who had each killed their husbands, Hades forced them to fill a tub with water to cleanse them of their crimes. But as the tub would always leak, they would spend an eternity trying to fill it. Ixion, the first man to murder a family member and who had grown lustful for Zeus's wife, would be bound to a wheel of fire that would spin for the rest of time. Whereas Tantalus, a man who had killed his son and stolen from Zeus, was cursed to eternal hunger and thirst. He would stand in a pool of water, with the branches of a fruit tree hanging above him. However, as he went to quench his thirst, the water would recede, and as he went to eat, the branches would rise out of reach, forever leaving him in a state of agony. But of all the punishments, the most famous would be given to Sisyphus. Having cheated death multiple times, Sisyphus would pay the ultimate price for tricking the gods. Every day he was to roll a boulder up a steep hill, only to have it slip from his grasp as he neared the peak. Having to start over again and again, Sisyphus would suffer his punishment for the rest of time. The most evil of all of Hades' punishments, however, would not be reserved for murderers and thieves, but for those who had committed the worst crime of all, those who had ignored their online security. For these condemned souls, Hades would offer only one escape, Nord's ultimate security package, a tool so secure not even the gods of Olympus could breach it. You too can reclaim control over your digital privacy and gain access to malware protection that warns you about unsafe sites and scans and deletes any files that could harm your device. A data breach scanner to check if your passwords, email address, or credit card details have been leaked. An ad blocker that prevents all those annoying pop-up ads and banners, allowing for a smoother online experience. A privacy tool that stops third-party websites and online spies from tracking your activity. A cross-platform password manager that can back up any passwords you choose in an encrypted vault. A dark web monitor that scans the dark web for your personal information, helping protect you against account lockouts and identity theft. 24-7 customer support, and to top it all off, access to the fastest VPN on the market. Their VPN will allow you to browse securely while traveling or using public Wi-Fi, access geo-restricted content from the likes of YouTube and Netflix, and bypass internet censorship, all while keeping your data private and secure. 
If you have any device connected to the internet, you need NordVPN's ultimate security package. Protect yourself online, click the link in the description or pinned comment, and go to nordvpn.com forward slash the lifeguide. Once there, make sure you click grab deal. This will give you access to the best prices available. What's even better is that if you select their two year plan, you can get everything we just mentioned for just three pounds a month. It helps support the channel and is completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Although Hades would have complete control over the underworld, his realm was so vast that he had to enlist the help of the Furies to carry out his punishments, but they would not only be confined to the realm of the dead. The murder of a family member was considered so terrible in Greek society that even those still alive could not escape Hades' wrath. They would be hunted down and tormented by the Furies, three sisters from the underworld who would not stop until they had avenged the dead and driven their target insane. It would be the underworld they called home, resting here before their everlasting torment of the human soul began once again. Travelling across the underworld would also lay the fields of mourning, a resting place for those who had spent their life pursuing love, only to be rejected. The anguish they felt would condemn them to this dark and haunting forest where they would forever mourn the love they never had. In Roman myth, the most famous resident of this place would be Queen Dido of Carthage, who had fallen in love with the famous hero Aeneas. The two would wed, yet their love was not to be, for Aeneas, having been told by the gods to found a new city, would abandon her to continue his journey, with Dido taking her own life, not able to withstand the anguish. In the far corner of the underworld lay the Land of Dreams, an island accessible only to the gods of Olympus. Ruling over the island would be Morpheus, the god of dreams, who each night when all were asleep, would alongside his two brothers control the dreams of not only mortals, but the gods too, either granting them pleasant visions of the future, or haunting them with the worst of nightmares. Upon waking with their dreams having either been filled with desire or despair, each person would be inspired to take action according to Morpheus's will. The cave in which Morpheus slept and spent most of his time while shaping mortal dreams was filled with so many poppy seeds that his name was lent to the opium-based medication morphine, renowned for sending its users to sleep. The true seat of power, however, did not rest in the land of dreams, for the underworld had only one ruler, the mighty Hades, who lived in a grand palace deep within the earth. Hidden away on an island engulfed by fire, those who searched for his home without an invitation would become lost in the dark and winding halls of the dead. But one day, the isolation would become too much even for Hades, with him deciding that the beautiful Persephone would become his wife to rule by his side. However, Persephone was the daughter of Demeter, the sister of Zeus and goddess of farming, who ensured the harvest was rich and that the land remained fertile. Under her watch, the fields knew no decay, with the earth consumed in an endless spring. But there was one thing Demeter prized above all else, her daughter Persephone. However, one day, while Persephone was strolling through a meadow, a beautiful flower would bloom before her, a narcissus, something she had never seen before. But when Persephone reached down to pluck the flower, the earth would break open and swallow her, with Hades dragging Persephone down to the underworld where she would be forced to marry him. Distraught at her daughter's disappearance, Demeter would search for nine days and nights, until the sun god Helios revealed her captor's identity. Upon hearing the news, Demeter locked herself away for an entire year, refusing to return until Persephone was released. But without the goddess of farming, the world entered into a great famine, with the fields turning barren. It was only now, with humanity on the brink of starvation, that Zeus was forced to intervene, ordering Hades to return Persephone to her mother. Although Hades would agree, 
before she left, he fed Persephone the food of the dead, a single pomegranate seed, binding her to the underworld for eternity. In order to save humanity, Zeus was forced to make a compromise, ruling that for nine months of each year, Persephone would return to live with her mother on Olympus, with Demeter's joy causing nature to bloom across the earth. However, for the final three months, Persephone would return to Hades in the underworld, a period we now call winter, with Demeter's grief at the absence of her daughter, causing the plants to die and the world to freeze over. And so it was that the seasons began. With Persephone now by Hades' side, she would gain a large influence over the realm of the dead. But while the underworld was filled with punishments, Hades and Persephone were not cruel rulers, and would take pity on mortals who found their way into their kingdom. Orpheus, a famed musician and poet, had fallen in love with the beautiful Eurydice, but on their wedding day, Eurydice would be killed by a snake bite, with Orpheus left alone in despair. Grieving and desperate to see his wife once again, he would decide to travel to the underworld to retrieve her. Arriving at the River Styx, he would take out his lyre and play a beautiful song for Charon, who was so moved that he ferried Orpheus across the water for free. Upon reaching the other side, he would be confronted by Cerberus, with the tune he played so sweet that the three-headed dog would be lulled into a deep sleep. Finally, he would reach the palace of Hades and Persephone, playing for them a song about his lost love Eurydice. With tears welling in his eyes, Hades would take pity on Orpheus and agreed to release her soul, but only on the condition that Orpheus refrained from laying his eyes upon her until they were both out of the underworld. Overjoyed, Orpheus would agree and began to lead his bride through the dark and winding halls of the dead. But as he neared the surface and the daylight shone upon his face, he would be overcome by excitement, turning around to look at his wife. But Orpheus had not yet completed the journey, and so as his eyes fell upon her, Eurydice would be dragged back down into the realm of death, never to return. It was a lesson to all Greeks in the virtues of patience and restraint, for if Orpheus had resisted temptation when his goal was so close, Eurydice, the love of his life, would have been with him once again. <laughs> 